I've been sort of picking at the electronics a little bit, trying to get the uh, under the seat electronics tray sort of organized. And uh, I thought I'd bring you out at this point because it all kind of fell into place really, really quickly. Right here, what you see is the original harness and this is where the controls plug into it and the key and a few other bits and bobs. It, it, everything is pretty much stuck and I haven't modified this harness in any way. This is exactly as it was in the bike. I'm just repurposing where things are running at this point. I, I get a lot of questions from people that have uh, trouble with electronics and, I, and it's been requested to me a couple of times that when I do do the electronics that I go into a little bit more detail on what I'm doing. So I thought I'd sort of share what I've come up with on this particular harness on this particular bike. This is where the harness comes in and starts to split out. Like I said, this is all factory uh, wrapping right now. And I'll sort of go through each strand and what they do and where they go. Closest to me, this is the main battery terminal. This plug goes into that, they connect directly. And what I've done right now is normally where this cable would have gone into the solenoid, which I have right there, uh, I have it hitting the positive of the battery directly. This battery isn't really designed to run the starter on this bike, so I'm not going to completely depend on it, but I do want to have the system integrated in case A, it, it works no problem, or B, something changes later and I go with a bigger battery in a different place or something, the rest of the system is in place. Second one we have coming down here under the bracket, it goes to this connector, which goes to the fuse box. Third one is, we'll come to this guy over here. Comes out, circles round, there's a Y junction right here, one half of it goes to the rear brake light assembly. The other half of that is this guy. This guy has the starter button uh, cables on it. This green, yellow, and black uh, hooks up to what was originally the voltage regulator, which I'm updating for this battery, so I'll, I'll explain what I've done with that too. The last two, well, there's a, there's a dual black here, so the other half of this black and this green with yellow stripe goes to the rear brake switch. This last piece plugs directly into the voltage rectifier. This is a new, more modern rectifier regulator. It takes the place of both of these. That's the original rectifier, same plug as that. Uh, and that's the original voltage regulator. Yellow, I believe, is the uh, AC signal. Uh, green is ground and black is a battery 12 volt positive. So the new rectifier regulator takes care of both of those by way of it directly plugs into the harness, which is quite nice. There's the extra black wire that comes off of it, which goes into the harness where the original black wire for the original regulator came off of. The other two wires, the ground and the yellow, which is AC, uh, don't need to be used. So those can be capped and put away or whatever. I'm not really using the starter in this scenario, but I wanted to have it wired. So I have the starter solenoid here. I've basically modded it a little bit, just the, the bracket on the back here that used to come off straight this way, I've bent up. So these two wires are running flat and then my two main leads are just sticking there. This will obviously get bolted down. The way I'm gonna implement this is I'm gonna leave my original hot connection alone so that nothing gets interrupted by that. And all I'm gonna do is take an extra hot lead and just run it to the solenoid when I feel the need to use it. So everything will remain intact. One extra wire will come and tap onto that. Last wire in that chain is obviously the starter wire. I don't have it in right now. And that'll just come in, tap off that, follow the frame down to the starter. This guy, I'm putting here right now, I know these guys need air to keep cool and ultimately if I find that it's getting warm, I'm just going to back it and stick it up underneath. So that's, that's basically that setup for right now. Something else I've decided to go back on with is using the original 
handlebar controls. The harness on this bike was very non-molested. There was a couple little snips, there was a couple broken wires, easily traceable, but for the most part, everything is seeming to be plug and play. So I really didn't want to get into modifying the kill switch. Um, the clutch lever part was broken on this side, so that way with the original I can use the original clutch lever and it'll be nicely set up. Starter button's broken on that. The, you can buy replacements and ultimately I could put a button somewhere else. Right now I'm not really going to worry about it. The original controls, which I have here, are designed to be run in the handlebar. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to match the holes in the original handlebars to these and hopefully uh, I'll get the controls wired in. So it'll just keep the nice clean look of the handlebars consistent and I won't have to modify how they clip on to get the wires to come out. Well, let's have a go with that. them installed. I've done that before and that was definitely harder this time. A very unfun job and I'm glad it's over. I think I needed to, the shielding on these guys is just pretty old and pretty bitter, brittle. I should have taken my own advice about things and, and gotten rid of this, but I was hoping to pull it through as a, as a section. I got a little bit of scuffing on the bars from rolling around, so I'm gonna have to do a touch-up paint on that. Not a huge big deal. Anyway, they're in. They're not <laughs> coming out again. <laughs> I hope. I really hope. But with that, like I said, I've got them coming out the bars. They come around in behind and they come in and tap into the main harness. And speaking of the main harness, I've completely stripped all the insulation off. I figured um, while I'm here, I might as well just get done what I need to get done. I've completely gone uh, in a different direction with the layout, not for any particular reason other than I just can. And I'll go into detail why, what I'm doing, but it just gives you more options with layout and stuff. If I haven't mentioned it before, um, what I've wanted to move was the diode. Um, from up here, I wanted to move the, the signal flasher from up here. I wanted to get them both back here under the seat. You can see my flasher's kind of sitting there. So the easiest way to do that was to strip everything down and just be able to trace where it all goes. And on top of that, there was a couple of other small mods that I wanted to get done on the harness. This way I can do it cleanly, I can rewrap everything, and it's great. What I do want to show you is that I didn't point out last time is, if you can see it down right there, that's the connector that comes off the uh, stator 
coil for the engine. Um, not only off the stator coil, it also has the uh, neutral switch in there as well. But basically, one of the mods you can do on the harness of this bike is give the charging system a little bit more oomph. Um, these charging systems were never the greatest, but generally in a nutshell, there's two systems in here. There's two different sets of windings that kind of act independently. One just went to the main charging system on the bike. The other went to the headlight switch and was engaged when the headlight was turned on. Most times everybody's running with headlights anyway, so having them as two separate circuits doesn't really make sense. So there's a really easy mod that one can do. Uh, these four little wires right here, that's the plug that hits this harness. Most notably, the yellow and the white are the two that uh, represent the two different uh, stator coils. So if you combine these, it basically doubles the effort permanently of what's going on. So instead of just trying to, you know, reach down here and get them crimped in here and use this tiny little bit of wire, I can now trace these two wires over to here. And if I pull back a little bit, you can see that the yellow that comes off the harness actually goes into a breakout little uh, winding. I'll call it a breakout. It's a, basically, it's, it's a one into three. So this yellow goes to three different places. One of those goes into the new rectifier regulator harness or the original, the original plug for the new rectifier regulator. The second one was the one I mentioned before that went into the original regulator, which was not going to be used anymore. I'm going to use this to help me get combine these two in a, in a kind of nice clean way. Feed this one back through the harness and just let it line up with this white one right here. Snip the white one, tie in the yellow one, solder it all together, and then and rewrap it. I've moved my new rectifier regulator up here. I wanted to get the battery more central under the bike. Not that it weighs a lot, but it does stick up slightly. So I wanted it kind of center of the seat and center this way which I wasn't getting here here it was a little offset there's a number of things that stick up right the the uh, solenoid sticks up a little bit the battery sticks up a little bit this guy doesn't but I'm actually gonna prop it a little bit so it's about the same height as the battery um, just to get airflow around it this guy sticks up a little bit um, and the fuse does not. So the fuse, I'm gonna actually going to prop it up as well to give it a little bit of space because underneath I'm probably gonna have a couple of flush mounted bolts that will help me mount whatever fender I get to later. So that's why I wanted to stick that there so I could actually, it can raise up without getting in the way of that. So when I do my fiberglass, there's just kind of kind of be a molded hump all the way through the entire center of the thing, which will kind of disappear. And then with shaping of the foam, you will never even know it's there. Last two things I wanted to move. First one is the diode. Basically a wire comes from this direction and a wire comes from this direction. And I want both of them to be in here. So this one is basically joined and split here. So I know that this green wire, this light green wire with the red stripe does appear in here. It comes straight off the stator coil. I can cut it where it joins here, tap it in this part here, that gets one end in, and then the darker green with the red stripe also hits a junction right here. And from that junction, another green wire goes back that way and more go up into the harness this way. So all I need to do is cut where it goes in, follow the other dark green with red stripe wire back into here and connect it. That gets this moved here without having to rerun or back run or do any other wiring. I hope this makes sense. This is, this is what a lot of people ask me about. So I'm going into a lot of detail just to sort of cover the basis because I enjoy this. I 
you know, this whole spaghetti thing, I kind of, I like stripping it all apart, cleaning it all up and putting it all back together and then having it work seamlessly and knowing that there's no shorts and no funny business kind of gives you a real peace of mind, right? You're, you're kind of going through each connector one by one. You're seeing, you know, if there's any frayed or anything that might be touching or whatever. So that's why I'm doing this. Um, if we come to the flasher, uh, same thing. It, like I mentioned before, comes right off the black harness at this connector here. We know that it's the same wire that comes back here. So this first one we can cut and tap into this in here. I have uh, the, uh, the harness from the CJ360 down here. I also have another CB450 harness as well. So I've got all kinds of extra connectors and all kinds of extra plugs and wire that I can match on the bike. So uh, coming back to this, black gets connected into this. This gray only goes to one place and that is to the controls for the uh, signals. So when it comes down here, I'm gonna have to find more gray wire and then basically feed it through the harness so that I can get it back to where I wanna get it. Everything else here uh, is gonna stay up here. This is all the points connectors, coil, that's obviously the harness that goes to the controls. Uh, there's my key plug and right there is uh, my horn plug. The rest that I have to deal with later is, you know, the inside, the headlight harness. And the one thing I will have to add will be the front brake light switch. just touch on for a quick second regarding uh, this wiring is first the diode that I moved. Um, I can't find it anywhere on any wiring diagram of any year for this bike. I can find it in diagrams for other bikes but nothing I found points to it being on that bike so I don't know is is the harness not the original? I have no idea. The original starter solenoid was missing from the bike so how it was originally wired I don't think I'm ever going to know. The other the other point was the yellow wire with the red stripe that also goes to the starter button or it goes to that control section also isn't on any diagrams. So I always thought it was an in and out of the button and maybe it is and, and maybe it's something else. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to wire it pretty simply the way the original diagrams show it. But I thought I would just mention those couple of things because I... I don't know. I just can't find them. Yeah, anyway, guys, if uh, I hope this helped somebody out. If it did, uh, give me a like. If you enjoyed the video anyway, give me a like. Next week is back to cutting and grinding and welding. Uh, I'm going to work on the original tailpiece, and I think I'm going to try and use this. This CJ360 has been an invaluable source of parts for me for this build, so I thought I would just try something different, and instead of reusing the original tail I'm gonna use this it's just it's a little just a little different style obviously I'm not using the whole thing it'll just be this so hopefully I can make something cool out of it if you haven't please subscribe give me a like on the video leave a comment down below and uh, we will see you next week cheers guys